We've all made a steak. We've all made a great steak. We've all made a not so great steak. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves the question, why? Why was it good? Why was it bad? What did we do? And I feel like understanding the whole process or at least some of the science behind it, don't get afraid. Some of the gastronomy makes sense to help us understand why things are happening. So today, I wanna to give you guys a primer on steak. I want you to know the ins and outs of a gorgeous steak before you start cooking it. So this is a primer on how to get the perfect steak, but more importantly, why it's perfect. Cool? Nerd alert. Let's do it. Let's do it. I wanna start by talking about our steaks. Now here I have a New York strip and a ribeye, probably the two most familiar cuts. Uh, one of the first things, and I'm sure you guys have heard this before, we want to dry off our steaks. Uh, you'll notice some of that. Here we go, wanna get nerdy, bud? Here, here we go, we're gonna start. The first thing we're gonna talk about is osmosis. Osmosis is when salt reacts or air reacts with the surface of meat, what happens is the moisture from inside starts to wick out, it starts to come out, creating osmosis. Now what this means is we're still creating a very moisture driven steak, but we're bringing that moisture to the surface so that it seals and the fat can start to render on the inside. So osmosis is number one, osmosis. Can we put text on the screen? Osmosis is when the moisture comes out of the steak but locks the fat and flavor on the inside. Cool? Cool. We're cool? I'm gonna flip these over. Uh, actually, take the, uh, come in close, CJ. I wanna show you, I'm using very, very thick steaks. I am a proponent of doing a steak for two rather than two smaller cuts. Mostly, and you'll see when we get to the end of this video, mostly because we're able to, to manipulate the internal temperature a lot better. It opens our window. It gives us a larger window for failure or, or success. In CJ's case, You need failure, failure. windows. Yeah, I, said, I beat you to it. I was, he stole my joke, hijacked my joke. <laughs> uh, something else I like to do, and before we get too far, oh, I should have showed you this before. I'm gonna scrape some of this away. Check this out, because I, I need to show you this, especially in a ribeye, because it's more visible. All right, there are three kinds of fat in a steak. Sorry, I, sh I totally should have done this first. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take a paper towel, because this is Nerd Town. What? We have entered Nerd Town, and CJ's the mayor. And you can't, wait, no. You sure? I don't know. I'm gonna show, <laughs> I'm gonna show you. I have to show you. <laughs> we'll season, we'll re-season in a second. All right, so there are three kinds of fat in beef. Uh, well, in most things, but it's most easily seen in beef. Now, the first uh, that I wanna talk about is intra muscular fat. That's what we've known as marbling. Marbling is intramuscular fat. CJ, get really close. Do you see these little flecks of fat within the muscle? I do. Not this, but this. Right. Not this, but this. That, that intramuscular fat, that's what's known as like the juiciest part of the steak. Then we have the intermuscular fat, which is most visible on a ribeye. Do you see this connective ring that comes right here? I do. It's what separates the decal from the eye. Now the intra, I'm sorry, intermuscular fat is a bit more uh, globular. Don't be afraid, that's a good thing. Uh, it's the connective parts that hold the different muscle groups together, which gets really delicious and what we think of as fat. And then on the outside, it's most visible on a New York strip. Uh, this part here on the outside, this is the subcutaneous fat. Don't, don't worry, Come don't on, freak dude. out, Come it's on. fine. Subcutaneous fat is the layer between the skin and the meat. So skin, subcutaneous fat, meat. Uh, also known as the rind, pork rinds, CJ, okay. you're familiar? You know, I know. Pork rinds is that section there, right? So those are the three different kinds of fat and it's important to understand for a couple of reasons. That fat on the outside doesn't break down. You've had pork rinds, uh, doesn't break down. The intermuscular fat also doesn't really, really break down. What we wanna pay attention to is the intramuscular fat, which is those beautiful flecks of fat throughout the meat. We need to get that to 120. So the way we do this is with a very high temp fat. I'm using bacon fat. That's gonna go on my griddle at super high heat. We need high heat to get Maillard reaction. I know you make fun of me for saying it all the time, but it's massively important when it comes to a really, really good steak. Get your griddle temperature hot, screaming hot, on one side and then off 
on the other side. The bacon fat will crisp and sear that skin, allowing the surface temperature to get really caramelized and gorgeous, creating that bark, that Maillard reaction that we love and see in steak. But it also gives the middle of the steak a chance to come up to 120 without overcooking when we bring it over to the cooler side of the grill. Bringing it up slowly gives that meat, the, the fat on the inside of a meat, a chance to come up slowly and get really, really, really juicy. Something else to remember, you're gonna, steak lovers out there, come, come here. Just come in, come in real close for a second. Just come. A really, really good steak should not be cooked rare. I said it. Whoa. Or medium rare. Whoa. It should be cooked medium. Let me tell you why. So a rancher takes time to make sure a steak or a, a piece of their beef is fantastically marbled. If that marbling doesn't reach 120, 130 even, it never liquefies, so the collagen never has a chance to turn to gelatin, being the juiciest steak you've ever had. So do not be afraid of medium. Do it this way, and I promise you'll have a juicy, fantastic steak every single time. I mean, look at it. I was rambling. Add some butter, some smashed garlic, some rosemary to add some flavor. Yeah. Continue with the rambling? Continue. Continue with the rambling. The, the basic rule of thumb is if it took you 10 minutes to cook, you need five minutes to rest. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Letting it rest is like, like this steak has been through some stuff. It's been through a triathlon. It's been through an event. It's been a hard day. It's had some action and it needs a chance to chill, maybe take a nap. Take a load off. Just take a nap just for a minute to allow those fats, not juices, but the fats to hang out for a second and permeate through the steak and what you're left with is perfection. There you go. Essentially what I really want you guys to think about is why things happen right? Um, it doesn't necessarily change, the, it certainly doesn't change the recipe, but it changes the way we think about what we're doing, right? So um, I know some of you might be afraid because of what you've been told in the past. And hey, you know what? Listen to people you trust. I hope I'm one of them. Medium rare is not always the best option. Now, one other thing to remember, I'm going to put this little piece of garlic over here because I want it to hang out a little bit. I'm going to hang these out too. Uh, so there's also something that happens uh, with some oxidization. This doesn't change flavor, this doesn't change texture, any, any of the juiciness of it, but as the, uh, once you cut your steak open, as the air, the oxygen starts to oxygenate, it, it, like, it starts to bloom out. It starts to turn more and more red. So if you look really close here, CJ, you see we have that very nice medium, uh, but it's I gonna get it. more red the longer the air hits it. Uh, so here we have our ribeye, more fat. Uh, more intramuscular fat, more intermuscular fat, but less, come on, what is it? I don't know, dude. Subcutaneous That's what I was gonna fat. say. The New York Strip, lots of subcutaneous fat, uh, no intermuscular fat, and some intra, decent intramuscular fat. The thicker cut is what you want because you can be on the, gr look, look at this, look at this. See this crust? Gorgeous, stunning, Maillard, crisp, crust. That's what we want, but if it was a very thin steak, it would take you the same amount of time to get it, but the inside would be far overcooked. You'd be in leather, well done territory. Uh, this is not a recipe video. Did we mention that already? Uh, not we it, a recipe it video. Technique, technique. Uh, we, gotta, we gotta taste this, of course. Of course. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, but I mean, you can see here, uh, actually, check this out, CJ. Can you see the coast to coast fantasticness right can, there, can, right? I can see it. Very tiny gray band, very tiny gray band, lots of medium. That's what we're looking for. That's what we want in a really, really good steak. All right, so I'm gonna separate these out a little bit. Let's do a couple bites of the New York Strip because there are three of us here. So I'm gonna do a nice little slice here of the New York Strip. Well, actually, uh, Ethan, CJ, do you have a preference? Ribeye or New York Strip? I'm a ribeye. Yeah? Yep. But eat? I like, I'll eat New York Strip. I mean, there's no problem there. What about you, Ethan? Uh, you know me, I'll see whatever. It's Even true, though. it's true. Oh, he does know. Does he? He does know. All right, so check out what we're looking at here. Uh, so ribeye on this side. Let me scoot it over a little bit. Ribeye on this side, New York Strip on this side. Can you see, CJ, can your camera pick up how juicy that is? Oh yeah. Crazy juicy. What I want you to pay attention to is this. This intramuscular fat, this is where we want. This is why medium is important. We give it a chance to get really, really juicy. You know, can we also, we'll dispel. Let's dispel a myth. Okay. Searing does not lock in juices. Hmm. Old wives tale. It's not true. However, what it does is it starts the process of distribution of heat evenly throughout, making that collagen turn into gelatin and the intramuscular fat creating juice. So technically it's correct but it's not exactly descript. 
You're having a lot of fun, aren't you? <sighs> How nerdy do I sound? Very nerdy. Do you understand? Leave me, let me know in the comments. I, I really want this to be simple to understand. Uh, let me cut these in half so we can all have a little piece here. Do you want some of the garlic, CJ? Dude, I want it all. Boom. I want it all. I want it all. And I want hey. it all. Wrong show. Wrong show. Thanks, wow, Ethan. Thank you. Wrong show. All right, here we go. I'm going to go in. Here, here, CJ, come on in. Oh. Come here, buddy. Come on. Come on. Right. I'm going to go with ribeye. Uh, e, if I hold this close to you, can you see this? Can you see this magic? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a solid cool. steak. That's a solid steak. Hey, penguin. <laughs> Conditional is better. Stop cooking at me, Swan. Wrong show. But whoa. Quit, rhyme. quit rhyming, I mean it. Can't help myself. There we go, that's enough nerding. Plenty of nerding. Thank goodness. If you haven't already subscribed, clip the link, clip, I do this all the time. Please clip the link down below. Subscribe, click the bell icon so you get an email every time we post a video. I hope you guys love this. Let me know in the comments if you want some more nerdisms, mm -hmm. some more food science uh, like this. Leave us a comment, let us know what you want to see in the future. Uh, this is Cook, Eat, Repeat, where we like to help you become a better cook one recipe or technique uh, at a time. I'm your host, Chef Nathan Lippy, and I will see all of you in the very next episode. Don't you dare forget about that garlic. Come on. Come on. Mm.